Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and today I want to tell you about some guest posts that are out on my blog that you might not have seen if you only watch my channel on YouTube or if you're fairly new to my, my website because there are so many tutorials out on my website that most people probably haven't seen every single post. Now I have been kind of away from YouTube for a little while because uh, well, it's Minnesota and the snow melted, so I had to get outside. I've got a huge garden. I really wanted to play outside of the house just to, you know, I've got a little bit of cabin fever going on for the really long winter and I had to get outside. I've also been working on um, this fox mask. He's not done yet, so I can't really show you anything about him. You saw the original clay sculpture that I made to get him started. Uh, and I made a silicone mold for him. You saw me do that. But... Um, these take a long time, especially when uh, you're spending most of your time playing around in the dirt. <laughs> so I'll tell you about this next time. But this time I want to tell you about these really amazing guest posts. Now the octopus is one of Cindy Williams' guest posts. She did uh, make this phenomenal octopus. It's got every detail. It's so lifelike. It would almost be startling uh, to see it on someone's wall. I mean, it's just an amazing piece of work. She really does show us step-by-step uh, step, every single thing that she did to create this octopus. You've got to see that post. I'm going to put a link to all of these down below. So go ahead and find the links below this video. Go ahead and, and go to my website and see uh, these tutorials. They're just amazing. You don't want to miss any of them. Cindy also did a chimera, um, three-headed chimera. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> And um, she, again, she showed us exactly how she did it, every single piece. It took her a really, really long time to do it. Um, obviously a very challenging piece of work. Rex Wynn has some really nice tutorials for us. He, he uses the air dry clay recipe that's on my website a lot more than I do. So he's got some techniques for how to use it, how to make it really smooth on the outside um, that I had never really tried. So he shows how to do that. Uh, he's got one of the giraffes. There are actually three of them out there that I'll tell you about later, but he's got one of them. He's also got some reef fish they're really colorful. He made a lot of different kinds. He shows us how he painted them, how he made them. And he showed us how he made a, a piggy bank <laughs> that um, was calling it a piggy bank, but it's actually a calf. <laughs> he makes a lot of piggy banks in different animals. I think this is really cool. And he showed us how to do that in one of his guest posts. Now Rex does have one of the guest posts with a giraffe in it, and there's two more. Leslie made a giraffe with her husband for a vacation Bible school. And because it's a full giraffe, all four legs, it's standing up and it's going to be around children. So they had to make sure that it was actually going to stand up on all four legs and not fall over. So they created a, a wooden armature for it. Uh, they used the uh, giraffe head uh, pattern that's on my website for the head of course but then they created everything else themselves and made it just it's really cool they show us exactly how that was done and our other guest post with the giraffe in it was made by terry uh who made one that's flat it's made out of uh, insulating foam and she made it really flat and really light so it could go on the wall of her baby's bedroom um it's paper mache clay over foam so anytime anyone asks me if you can use paper mache clay over foam i always send them to this guest post because she obviously did it and it works really well you could use that same technique of course to make any other kind of animal too she could because she does show us step by step how it was done now if you'd like to make a project for a baby's nursery but you want something just a little bit smaller and a little bit faster our friend eileen shows us how she made this woodland mobile to hang over the baby's crib it would just be so much fun to have in a nursery and it was really fun to make too so make sure that you check out that guest post as well now Eileen has another post uh, based on a, a toy design, I believe, and it's also been made into a mobile for a nursery. And the best part about this one is, is she calls it her three hour project. So if you're looking for something really fast for a baby, that would be the project that you want to do. Go ahead and check that out. Um, she's also got a figure sculpting tutorial for using a paper pole, paper pole. I don't know how to pronounce that. I've never actually used it, but it's a fabric, uh, hardening product that you can use to drape over figures and make some really nice uh, sculptures with it and she shows us how to do that and she uses another product called Paltaya to make an outdoor sculpture um, this one is really nice it's a, a little rabbit that she has out in her garden 
Paltaya looks like a product that you can use very much like paper mache clay over a crumpled foil armature, but it hardens waterproof so that you can actually put it outside. When Isis was making her full-size carousel horse, she was giving us progress uh, reports out on the Daily Sculptors page. And we just wanted to know how it was done. I mean, we, we didn't just want a little bit, we wanted to know it all. <laughs> I asked her if she would do a guest post for us, and she did. Uh, she shows us not only how she made the entire uh, carousel horse really big but she also shows us the the things that she thought was going to work and it didn't work really very well and so she had to do them over um, something that always happens when you're making any kind of sculpture any kind of creative thing at all you're going to have things that you really need to rethink and um, do it some other way I just think it's so cool when people show us that um, like I said, all of the links to all of these posts are going to be down below this video, so make sure that you check those out. Mark did something with his family that is amazing. He did what he calls the TikTok Croc. <laughs> really, I mean, it's almost like a museum piece. It's just beautiful. He did it with his, his kids, and he tells us the story. The, the reason that he did that is because he can remember back when he was a kid, his dad and his kids got to do a project together and it was just stuck with him for so long. He wanted his kids to have that kind of memory too. John Martin uh, used my wolf mask pattern uh, as a basis for a an original sculpture basically. And he wanted to use taxidermy eyes in it. He came up with a very good method for placing taxidermy eyes inside of a paper mache sculpture. So if you want to make any kind of animal and you want to use glass eyes from a taxidermy shop, you're going to want to see that post because it, it's really effective and just absolutely gorgeous. Now speaking of eyes, our friend Pia Blackwell makes a lot of animal sculptures. They're very realistic. She paints glass eyes for them. She doesn't buy taxidermy eyes. She, she uses the glass cabochon, I think they're called. Um, you can buy like a whole bag of them from Amazon. They don't cost very much. And then you can paint them if you follow her instructions uh, to fit the species that you're trying to make. A lot of people have used her instructions to make their own glass eyes. And then you can place them <laughs> in your sculpture uh, using the instructions that John gave us. So those two tutorials really go together really well. Um, like I said, I'm going to put links to those down below. If you like much smaller sculptures, Maud makes very small horses using wire armatures and paper mache clay. The way that she uses the paper mache clay is a little bit different than anything I've ever done. You're going to want to see that. Her sculptures are really um, dynamic and very realistic. So if you're interested at all in horses or how to uh, use the paper mache clay in a small uh, sculpture that has a wire armature, make sure that you check those out. Our friend Satik actually put two uh, guest posts up. He's one of our younger members of our community and he just does amazing work. Uh, he, one of them is a jaguar. Um, you can see how realistic it is. He, he shows us exactly how to do it uh, step by step. And his other one is a fennec fox. Just gorgeous, uh, beautiful animal. And his uh, sculpture is really, really nice. Uh, writing these posts, it actually takes quite a lot of time. I, I know because I write them all the time myself. And it, it really does take a lot of creativity and a lot of time to create a, a tutorial, a step-by-step -step showing people exactly how you make something. It's, it's, it's a creative exercise all by itself and it's always really nice to know that somebody was reading them. So if you do go to see any of these posts, make sure that you do leave a comment for the author so they can see that someone was there. Um, we've got several dragons. Uh, Tony, who calls himself the Great Big Sword on YouTube, <laughs> has a dragon bust that was inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. And Francisca has a, a tutorial showing us how she made Drogon the dragon. So make sure that you check both of those out if you're interested in any kind of dragon. Tom showed us how he made a life-sized bear. He started out with the bear pattern that's on my website just for the head, and then he added everything else. Now that was back in 2018. His bear at that time was standing outside in California. We haven't heard from him since then, so I don't know how well it's held up. Linda created one of the most popular posts on my website, actually. It's a 
paper mache clay toadstool that has been outside in the Florida Panhandle for I think at least three years now and I just heard from her last year she said it's still doing great. Sarah shows us how she made her pearl scale goldfish amazing fish look at those fins is that incredible and all those little um bumps on the outside of it and just it's really nice she's another person who really likes telling us how she does things over when if it doesn't work the first time she'll show us how to do it again and eventually it comes out really nice i love it when people include that kind of detail and and she definitely does um, just an amazing work it's really nicely done Another uh, guest post that I link to a lot is Kelly Richards' Great Blue Heron. Anytime somebody asks me how to make feathers on a sculpture that aren't directly attached, you know, just like sculpted on, but actually uh, separated a little bit like real feathers are sometimes, uh, she managed to do it on her Great Blue Heron. It's a beautiful sculpture. She shows us exactly how that was done. Uh, Rich Helms is going to be the last one on my list. He's a professional artist, and I think you may have seen this guy before. His anglerfish, I, I think, is all over the internet. It's a really strange fish in real life, and his sculpture is pretty strange, too. Really cool. He actually does show us exactly how that was made, so you can make your own if you'd like to. Now, that's all I've got for you today. Um, I do have a lot more work to do in the garden. I don't know how people work full-time and have actual homesteads. I just got a big garden, that's it, and I, <laughs> I just can't keep up. But as soon as this guy is done, I will let you know how this turned out. Can't wait to see how he looks when he's painted. I've got a couple of other um, ideas coming up. I just mentioned feathers, and I've had an idea of how to make feathers that's, that I've never tried before. If it works, I will let you know how that was done. Um, something that was a lot lighter than what we usually see. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. <laughs> but you'll find out. And come back and visit me. UltimatePaperMache.com. See you there.